When I released my first EU4 accent guide a couple of days ago on aristocratic ideas, some people thought it was hilarious and other people found it to be quite irritating. As a result, I've decided to compile this in-depth guide on aristocratic ideas, and I'll probably do one for pretty much all the other idea groups I cover if I do an accent guide for them. And so, without further ado, let's talk about aristocratic ideas and what they're actually good for and what the pros and cons are. The long and short of it is that aristocratic ideas are best taken early with the understanding that its best qualities are policies and by supporting other idea groups. It also promotes a very specific playstyle that I am pretty appreciative of by letting you get a bunch of cavalry with the first idea um, using, you know, with reduced cavalry costs and, you know, improved cavalry combat ability. Um, it's also quite a useful group in multiplayer, uh, more so than single player, um, with the increased coring costs um, as well as the military tech cost reduction. Um, it's also great because it can help you get into becoming a republic with all the benefits that come along with that. I still think republics are quite powerful and still probably better than monarchies, even with the changes introduced in Rights of Man. And so that can be that can become quite powerful and, and worth taking this idea group on its own for, you know, for if for no other reason than that, especially since merchant republics um, basically got nerfed into oblivion in Mare Nostrum, where they can only have like a 20 province limit before they start losing a, a you know, republican tradition. Um, you you are sacrificing a little bit by taking aristocratic ideas, it's true. Your, your army isn't going to be as strong um, as someone who took, you know, full defensive or um, quantity or quality, I should say. Um, and offensive ideas is, is going to have more, mili you know, military, like, wartime benefits. Um, and quantity is probably still going to be superior logistically, but aristocratic's bonuses are, you know, miscellaneous, but also quite useful. If you're looking to give Aristocratic a shot, here are the things that I recommend. Um, I recommend taking, uh, first of all, Innovative Ideas. Innovative Ideas combines the best with Aristocratic Ideas because of the tech cost reduction stacking. Aristocratic from, and Innovative also gives you 20% uh, production efficiency from its policy, which is very, very powerful. 20% production efficiency is very strong, um, and so I highly recommend taking it on that basis alone. Um, as well, it all if you are taking innovative ideas from taking aristocratic, that also encourages you to take quality ideas, which can easily get you into the you know 20% infantry combat ability from modern firearm techniques. Um, so I highly recommend you know if you're going to take aristocratic, I highly recommend taking innovative and thus uh, taking quality as a safe bet as well. Also, if you're taking aristocratic ideas, the next the other idea group I feel like you absolutely must take is influence ideas. If only if for nothing else than the in income from vassals bonus. If you're a feudal monarchy with aristocratic and influence ideas, you're getting 60% base income from your vassals, which is further improved by your legitimacy and other factors, I believe. Um, so you can get quite a bit of money from your vassals, and since vassal feeding is still basically the best strategy to expand, especially early game, um, you know, this is going to be quite helpful and, and boost your economy in a way that you might not expect. Um, you know, if you're making, I, I've seen, you know, it's like, typically it's like making three ducats a month, um, but with good, like, you know, income from vassals bonuses, you can get up to, like, you know, double that, so it'd be like, you know, something like 5.5 .5 ducats, um, on the higher end of it. Um, depending on the size of your vassals, of course, I've seen it go up to as much as, like, 10 ducats a month from your, uh, vassals when you're a bigger country and have, you know, a lot of vassals. Um, and so that's kind of what I'm talking about with, like, the unique play style is, um, it, it kind of promotes not getting a bunch of allies, and so taking aristocratic is really good for bigger nations, um, but it can also be good for upstart nations, smaller nations that are um, looking to vassalize, since uh, getting that extra income is, is quite useful um, for those nations. Uh, as well, it, it also combos well with administrative ideas, humanist ideas, uh, diplomatic, economic, espionage, uh, defensive, and quantity ideas. Um, Due to the policies that you get from those pairings, um, or natural pairings like you would get from army maintenance reduction, um, or army tradition gain in the case of defensive and quality. Um, and aristocratic policies in particular, in addition to having really, really strong bonuses and having a wide variety of different things that they can combine with, um, they combine well because of the tech because of the tech cost reduction from aristocratic ideas. You can actually afford to safely take a lot of these um, better policies. And if you take other policies from other idea groups that are good, like uh, quality economic, for example, takes a military point. Uh, with the extra points that you save from aristocratic, it can be very easy to actually um, take those policies without 
feeling like you're putting too much pressure on your military. And furthermore, if you take innovative, like I suggest, um, you can get you know further tech cost reduction of five percent, and uh, that'll further improve the ability at which you can uh, you know get those policies up and running, which is basically what aristocratic ideas is all about. Um, now I'm going to talk about the actual individual ideas and use them as talking points uh, to discuss the play style and strategies of this idea group. Alright, for the point at which you should be getting this, uh, for aristocratic ideas, because if you're going to take aristocratic, it should be your first idea group, uh, for military. Um, otherwise, I don't really, I don't think that it's worth taking. Um, and part of the reason for that is that, um, for, you get noble knights for the first idea, um, which reduces cavalry cost. So this is a redu reduction of the, the cost of the actual cavalry regiment itself and improves the actual cavalry combat ability as well. Um... So this is quite a hefty bonus by itself. This is a very strong bonus, in my opinion. Um, maybe not quite as strong as regiment cost reduction, but given that it is a cost reduction and an improvement in damage, um, you know, with ca with combat ability, I think it's I think it's just a really strong idea, especially if you take it as your first idea group in the game when when cavalry is still just the dominant force in the game. Um, this can still be useful late game as well, just because cavalry can do still do lots of shock damage in the late game. I know one thing I forget to do in the late game is build enough cavalry. Um, I only build the bare minimum I need to cover my flanks. Um, and so this this kind of promotes an interesting playstyle where you can have more cavalry um, without feeling too ashamed about it because of the shock bonuses that um, come along with having a lot of cavalry. So I think that's quite good about that. Um, over the course of a game, the cavalry cost, if you, if you buy, say, a um, hundred cavalry regiments over the course of a game being a little generous here because uh, you're probably not going to buy that many um, It'll save you about 250 ducats total over the course of a game on recruitment costs Which is okay, but if you're snowballing, that's not really too much to worry about um, If you for every for about every 20 cavalry though, this will save you about uh, one ducat per year on maintenance um, Which is pretty good. I think that's pretty good um, Just You know saving uh, you know, army maintenance is probably your biggest expense over the course of the game, just in general. And so saving any amount of money on it is pretty great, since it allows you to field effectively a larger army. Um, and even if you don't have tons of cavalry, it's still gonna, you know, cavalry are the second most expensive unit type. Um, and so getting a cost reduction for them is, is quite nice. Alright, the second idea for aristocratic ideas is, of course, the hostile core creation and income from vassals bonus. This didn't used to have income from vassals, but uh, now that it does, it's, it's quite good. Um, I, I think t I th even 10% it can be quite nice. Um, the thing about Hostile Core Creation is that it is something that is especially useful in multiplayer and somewhat useful in single player. Um, at the worst of times, the, the thing about Core Creation is um, it can be a great deterrent from people attacking your country. So if you have Hostile Core Creation, people are going to be less likely to attack you uh, and want to take your stuff. Um, especially in multiplayer if they're actually, you know, paying attention to the fact that you have that. Um, however, people in multiplayer might also say, like, hey, look at this asshole, because he's taking uh, core creation cost increases, and, um, and at that point might form a conspiracy against you, because, you know, it is it is horrible to have to deal with this. Um, but yeah, it, it also is a great deterrent for the AI, because even if you lose a war against, say, like, the Ottomans or something, um, they're only going to take so much land from you, because the amount it takes to core your land is, is going to be much, much higher, um, even though the Ottomans do get a core cost reduction. Um, so maybe they're not the best example. But, uh, yeah, I think this is, I think this is pretty useful. It's, it's subtly useful, like most of the things in aristocratic ideas. Um, and I, I think, yeah, I think it's good. Yeah, there's not really much more to say about that. Um, yeah, on the other hand, um, since you're planning on taking influence ideas, the as I mentioned before, the income from Vassal stacks, and since you're going to take influence ideas anyway for taking Aristocratic um, to become a Republic, uh, that can be a nice bonus to get um, anyway. Alright, the third idea, uh, Serfdom. Not a lot to say about this one, it just increases your manpower by 25%. It's not as good as quantity, obviously, but um, that being said, it can be a nice alternative to quantity if you don't want to take quantity wholesale and since aristocratic you want to take innovative you'll also want to take quality and so you it's really nice to round out for example um 
you know, aristocratic quality, innovative, and like defensive, for example. Um, all those combined can be like a really nice group, especially considering quality defensive aristocratic gives you a really high resting point for your for your army tradition. And so this can be a nice alternative to qu uh, quantity, if only for that reason of giving 25%, which, you know, again, is only half the bonus quantity gets, um, but at the same time is, is still useful. Manpower, you know, having more manpower is never a bad thing, basically. All right, next we get into one of what is arguably probably one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful, uh, military-based bonus. Um, actually, as far as military-based bonuses go, this is definitely the most powerful uh, in this group. Um, and this reduces army and navy tradition decay. Uh, navy tradition, you know, who cares? Army tradition, on the other hand, um, so basically the base decay rate of army tradition is 5%, so this will reduce it down to 4% uh, decay. Uh, so effectively, this is a 20% reduction in the decay rate of your army tradition, which combined with uh, quantity, or sorry, with quality and defensive, I think this can get you to a resting point of like 70 or 80 army tradition without actually fighting any wars. And so with this bonus combined with quality and defensive, um, it can be very, very easy to get to like the magical 100 army tradition where you're rolling 666 generals. Um, so I think this is really, really strong. Uh, in my opinion, um, especially for military, and and because of the way army tradition works, this is also going to increase your manpower in a way, and it's also going to improve your uh, land morale, uh, which again, when combined with the um, army tradition bonuses of quality and defensive, as well as defensive's uh, morale of armies, if you decide to take defensive, um, it can be quite good for that. Um, and again, though, even if you don't take quality and and defensive, I do recommend taking quality. Even if you don't take defensive, um, the guaranteed pips from offensive are still going to be useful because of your higher army tradition, and from quantity. As well, um, the regiment costs are still going to be quite useful. Aristocratic is basically a really, really good supporting idea group, um, as long as your early game is, is secure enough that you don't feel like you need to take something like defensive. Um, is kind of the point that I'm getting at with that. All right, next is uh, international nobility. This gives you an additional diplomat. Um, it's not pr a particularly complicated concept. Uh, Extra diplomats are usually always a good thing, uh, though. After a certain point, at about five or six diplomats, there's just so much that you can do. If you're really good at micromanaging your diplomats, this is going to be really good for you. Um, and it's it's worth noting that the only other way to get diplomats are diplomatic or espionage ideas or certain policies. And uh, policy taking a policy for a diplomat kind of sucks um, because you don't want to lose diplomats. So this is quite quite useful for this uh, for that purpose. I would say um, I think it's kind of underscored and, and and again you know one of the reasons people don't like aristocratic ideas is because not all the bonuses directly pertain to the military, but in this case, uh, having an extra diplomat is quite useful. And, uh, again, kind of goes along with the idea of, like, a, you know, a more unique, well-rounded military idea group. And the cool thing about the extra diplomat is, is if you don't have religious ideas, um, it can really help compensate for a lack of an extra casus belly um, by allowing you to fabricate more claims at a time and things of that nature. And for duchies especially that only get two diplomats, this can be a lifesaver uh, for sure. Um, and, and taking aristocratic ideas as a duchy is, is, is quite a common um, theme. Back when you could only form a republic when you um, had 20 provinces or less, even like a noble republic, for example, um, this, was a, this was especially useful um, because you didn't want to expand too much and if you took this early, it, you know, it could help you become a republic as well as give you that extra diplomat when you didn't really have one. So I think this is an underscored idea, even though it's pretty simplistic. I think it's quite good, especially since it can it can prevent you like you could like for example, if you wanted to take diplomatic ideas in part because you wanted another diplomat, this can help you know calm that and maybe you know dissuade you from taking diplomatic and instead take something like I don't know trade or exploration ideas instead. So this can be a nice alternative for those things as well. Alright, so this next idea, Noble Resilience, which reduces the cost of war exhaustion by 20%. Um, I, I admit that I abuse my Diplo points. I, I use them in any way I possibly can as long as it's not tech. Um, the only thing I care about with Diplo tech generally is um, basically either, like, if I, if I actually bother to colonize, obviously, colonial range and, and settlers. Um, but if I'm not, if I'm not playing like that, and I'm not colonizing, then... Um, then, you know, I'm mostly using my Diplo points to, you know, spam production and, um, you know, try to get it to Imperialism. That's basically the only thing I care about with Diplotech is, is Imperialism at that point. Um, the cost of reducing War Exhaustion by 20%, it costs 75 base to reduce War Exhaustion. So reducing it by 20% is a 15 point savings every time you do it. Now, if you have, you know, for every 10, 
uh, war exhaustion that you remove, that's, uh, you know, you're saving about 60, or sorry, uh, let's see, I wrote this down here. Yeah, you're saving about 75 points every five clicks of the reduce war exhaustion button. Now, if you press that a hundred times over the course of a game, you're saving like 1,500 points, which is good. You know, it allows you to have more diplo points to do other things. Um, reducing war exhaustion at the right times can also be quite useful for stopping rebellions and disasters from happening as well. Um, and, and, and it just helps your country in general by, you know, allowing you to do that. Um, it's it's kind of similar to stability cost modifier, except that, like, war exhaustion, you typically need to remove more of it at a time. And unlike stability... Um, it's it's you need to remo like remove it now, whereas stability you can kind of get away with like letting it sit at like negative one for a bit, you know, long enough to raise it back to zero, for example, um, which is why I, I think this is better than stability cost reduction, and um, even though it saves you diplom points instead of admin, so I, I think this is an underscored idea. I think it's pretty good over the course of a game. Um, Depending on how much you actually use that button, but if obviously if you don't use that button at all, then this is going to be useless to you. All right, we get to the last idea in aristocratic ideas, which is military traditions, which reduces military tech cost by ten percent. Um, this is quite useful for a number of reasons. For one, over the course of a game, it'll save you a quite a hefty amount of uh, military tech points. For example, if you get this by military tech seven, um, over the course of the game, you will save about um, I think it was. Uh, it was a, it was a lot. It's a, it, oh yeah, about fifteen fifteen hundred points I think it was, um, which over the you know that's that's paying for about four of the ideas that you took in this group. Um, so again, taking this early is is really like ideal I would say. The other primary advantage of of getting a tech cost reduction in addition to saving points is also that you can get tech earlier. Um, so if you want to buy tech ahead of time, uh, you can do that. If you want to just save points on it, you can do that as well. It's quite flexible and it's quite useful, um, especially since since it's a 10% reduction and not a you know 5% reduction. Um, in multiplayer, especially getting a tech advantage over somebody else can you know spell their demise, um, especially at critical tech points like 7, 8, and 15. Um, especially like tech 15 is a really really huge. Uh, tech for military. If you have tech 15 and your enemies don't, they're going to lose, basically. There's just not really a lot of ways around that unless you're like France or Prussia, for example. But this this can allow you to get those bonuses early and taking with innovative ideas, it's a 15% reduction overall. And if you're playing a country that already gets tech cost reduction, that's, you know, further, you know, tech cost reduction. If you're playing, um, if you go into a republic, I think you can take plutocratic as well, which if you don't care about your military at all and just care about tech um, as your primary strategy, then you can get an additional, I think it's 5% uh, tech cost reduction from that as well. Um, and you know, if you're saving 20% every tech on military tech, that's a lot of savings. And more importantly, you can take tech pretty early most of the time, um, making sure you're always up to date. And, uh, and yeah, so this is just, this is really powerful in, in a very subtle way. Um, in single player, it allows you to do the same strategy, but bearing in mind um, that the AI is, of course, uh, kind of dumb. Um, but this will still give you the same advantage of, you know, being ahead of time on tech. But on the other hand, um, the AI isn't going to focus as much, perhaps, on spamming uh, idea groups like a player might. And uh, lastly, of course, the last thing you get for uh, finishing aristocratic ideas, you get leaders without upkeep. Um, quite useful for duchies. Uh, again, like with the diplomat, it's it's very, very useful for duchies. Um, overall, you know, leaders without upkeep, people have told me, like, this is really, really powerful. This is a really, really strong idea. And the thing is, it can be, but um, I think at about... I think if you're kingdom or empire rank, and you get... I think you get, like, four base anyway. Um, and so having a fifth general without upkeep, well, it's okay. How this combos with aristocratic ideas, though, and this is a thought, is when you have army tradition bonuses from quality and defensive, and of course the aristocratic decay uh, reduction, then having more generals that are really good um, can really, you know, help steamroll your enemies, basically, if you've got those good generals, um, and, you know, if you have a general on every single small army. Um, especially by the late game where you just have tons and tons of armies because you don't want to, you know, get supply, pen you know, supply limit penalties. So, um, su subtly strong, in my opinion, um, it's okay. It's not amazing, but some people will tell you otherwise. And, uh, let's get some closing remarks. 
All right, so <clears throat> the thing about aristocratic ideas and the main reason people will say it's not very good is because it won't make your army indestructible and, inv and invincible in the same way that quality or defensive ideas will. Um, though multiplayer has its own, you know, certain set of caveats when it comes to taking ideas. Um, it has a lot of miscellaneous bonuses that I really, really like. And I, I like how unique aristocratic ideas is compared to pretty much every other military idea group. Uh, you know, obviously accepting naval and accepting plutocratic because plutocratic does have similar bonuses. Um, even though plutocratic, I think, is arguably worse now, unfortunately. Um... Yeah, I, I like aristocratic ideas overall, but um, a, a reiteration, it's very, very important when you take aristocratic, if you're going to do it you, and you commit to it, to take influence ideas to become a republic and to take innovative ideas to get the um, stacking tech cost reduction and to get the 20% uh, bonus production efficiency because it's very very strong um even if you but even even if you don't take innovative ideas aristocratic ideas combos with so many other groups in interesting and powerful ways that i really really enjoy it when i do take it um so aristocratic and espionage for example gives you 20 percent uh cavalry combat which can be you know really really strong in the hands of right nations or even just in the early game um if you you know decide to take espionage in the early game which in multiplayer you might um you know i'm not here to judge people but um, you, yeah, so Aristocratic is just a really, really good... It works, it plays well with other idea groups, which is something I really enjoy about it. Um, defensive Ideas, for example, is also another very, very strong early game idea group, but it mostly stands on its own because most of Defensive pol Ideas policies are, in my opinion, quite terrible, and I'll probably cover that at some point when I do Defensive Ideas. Um, <clears throat> that being said, um, yeah, I just, I really like that, and it, and it helps um, with other common play styles, like having cavalry-heavy armies in the early game and vassal feeding, um, just because of the, uh, you know, income from vassals. So it supports um, those common play styles and uh, encourages them, especially when you combine them with influence and innovative ideas. Um, and again, one of the other really nice things about it that's that's kind of subtle about it is is you can kind of use this 25% manpower modifier um, as a substitute for quantity if you don't want to take quantity. Uh, manpower is never a bad thing in, in my experience, and um, having 25%, it, it's kind of like the 20% force limit from offensive, right? Having 20% force limit from offensive is, is just enough that it's not too overbearing, whereas quantity's uh, extra 50% can be a little bit difficult uh, to enforce sometimes. And, uh, you know, people people will often say that this is one of the worst ideas um, just above naval just because, it, again, it doesn't give those raw military bonuses. But um, it provides a lot of other bonuses. And, and in multiplayer, I, ironically, I think this might be one of the more interesting multiplayer groups um, just because of some of the, you know, more niche bonuses it has, like a core cost, or in, you know, core cost uh, increase. Or, sorry, hostile core creation, I should say. Um and it's even in single player, um, the ability to become a republic is quite powerful in and of itself and shouldn't be underestimated, I think. Um, so, it, again, aristocratic is, is very, very subtle in the way that it's good, but I do think it's a good idea group. Um, it's just less about your military and more about supporting other idea groups and, and maybe thinking more long term about your ideas. Um, because you need to take this in the early game, I think, for it to be relevant. I, 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 actually, I would go as far as to say that if you want to take aristocratic ideas, if you... Do, if you don't take it for your first idea group. Don't take it, um, because the other the other the bonuses you would get out of it, it's much better to instead take something like quantity or defensive, um, or even just quality. Um, and at the, and at that point, you're basically facilitating a completely different opening strategy. And so, um, aristocratic again. So yeah, overall, good opening idea group. Good for a very interesting playstyle to become a republic. Um, apart from that, um, you know, don't take it un unless it's specifically your first idea group. And uh, until next time, uh, Godspeed.